We now welcome UFC Women's Flyweight Champion Valentina Shevchenko. Valentina, thank you for the time. Hello, guys. How are you? We're going to take the first set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cape Side Press. Hey, Valentina. How are you? Everything good. Thank you. Can I ask, are you wearing a camera around your neck right now? Wearing what? A camera? No, it's a mask. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, you and your sister are so close. Do you feel more nervous for her fight or yours for this Saturday? Right now, at this moment, a <laughs> very hard question. Um, you know, I think, of course, my fight. I cannot say more nervous for her fight because I know I cannot help her to do anything in as the octagon. She's only one. Uh, who can bring the victory to her and I'm on the only one who can bring the victory to me and that's why uh, both of us we have to focus on our own performance our own feeling how we feel for the fight during the fight after the weight cut and everything uh, it's very excited it's very huge thing to fight to be first sister to fight in the same UFC but at the same time, you cannot allow too much emotion uh, passing through you before the fight, even during the fight. I asked her because usually, you know, either of you is fighting and the other one is focused completely on helping her win the fight. So this week, what are you guys doing differently? Because obviously you don't have the other to help you during the week because they got to focus still trying to help each other <laughs> before the fight doing some stuff like uh, during the training after the training uh, just small things to make it uh, more comfortable for both of us but yes how i mentioned before the whole concentration it's uh, very different than other fights Valentina, I assume over the last few years, you've obviously done so great. You've become more popular. You're best friends with Halle Berry. I imagine it would be easy to really enjoy becoming more famous. So how do you stay so focused? Because not every champion, you know, seems to be able to keep it. What helps you to stay so grounded that you've been able to stay at this level for so long? Um, you know... Mm People who cannot manage it, they are just not ready for it. I was getting ready for this moment during all my life. <laughs> That's why I know exactly how to manage everything. I know what the primary, what is the secondary. When it's time to completely go deep training and disconnect anything, and when it's time to enjoy and be more open for the people to show more from yourself. I know what is the right time for each of the action. This is what helped me a lot. I want to ask you my final one. I know everybody must still continue to ask you if you're a spy. My <laughs> question is, is it annoying because so many people are still doing it? Or is it nice because they think you are that cool? You know, it, it's really, it's very funny. Um, as I, I would say, of course, when you see a person who would love to shoot, who were like fighting and doing probably more, more different stuff, people think, you know, something, something wrong with that person. But I would like my idea that a person can be anything. It can be a, a multitasker. It doesn't matter if he is a fighter, it has to be just a fighter. He can be or she can be whoever she wants. And uh, even being a fighter, it doesn't mean that you are limited to learn something more, to learn different profession and be also good at this profession. This is what I want to show uh, in my lifestyle. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you and best of luck. We will take the next set of questions from Sebastian Sicanti with Somos MMA. Hola Valentina, ¿cómo estás? ¿Me se me escucha? Hola, sí, sí, te escucho. 
Perfecto. Bueno, primero que nada quería preguntarte eh, cómo imaginás la pelea. Tenés una rival muy dura, eh, pero la cual te quería preguntar cuáles crees vos que podrían ser las llaves para tu victoria y de qué cosas también tendrías que tener cuidado de Jennifer Maya. Sabes, yo tengo que mm, mostrar todo lo que tengo, ser yo misma, no fingir, no ser nadie más, yo misma, usar toda mi técnica que tengo, toda la experiencia que tengo muy enfocada en lo que hago. Eh, bueno, el sábado vas a pelear justamente en la misma cartelera que tu hermana Antonina eh, y ambas suelen siempre acompañarse mucho. ¿Crees que el hecho de que ella luche la misma noche eh, que tú puede llegar a condicionarte un poco en sentido de quizás ceder un poco tu concentración sobre ti misma y preocuparte por cómo está ella? Ah, no, nunca. Nunca no va a pasar. Y yo creo que esto se pasa con la gente que no tiene mucha experiencia um, de estar en esta situación. Nosotros con Antonina estuvimos peleando en el mismo evento uh, hasta que nosotros tenemos en campeonato mundial de Muay Thai. Uh, así peleas como uh, yo o ella primera y la siguiente pelea es uh, una de nosotras. Entonces uh, esto fue como tú ves como tu hermana está peleando, pero tú sabes que el siguiente paso, siguiente pelea es tu pelea. Entonces, es, uh, uh, nosotros ya hemos vivido tanto tiempo que ya nosotros sabemos cómo controlar todas las emociones. Por eso, esto no va a afectar de ninguna manera a la performance. Perfecto. Eh, bueno, Jennifer Maya dijo hace un rato que Amanda Nunes le estuvo dando consejos para pelear contra ti. ¿Qué, qué, quería saber qué opinas con respecto a esto. Quiero decir que tenga mucho cuidado para escuchar a Amanda Nunes, porque una vez ella dijo, dijo a Jessica, hay un consejo, dijo algo, pero tú ya viste cómo ah, terminó la pelea. <risa> claro. Eh, bueno, hace rato también se sabe de tu interés sobre pelear una nueva vez eh, contra Amanda Nunes. Eh, quería saber si te ves dentro de la categoría en la que hoy estás por mucho tiempo o si te gustaría subir. ¿Cómo imaginas tu 2021? Uh, yo veo me, a mí defendiendo muchas veces mi cinturón y título de la campeona de Flyweight. Uh, lo que viene, estoy muy abierta para todas oportunidades. Perfecto. Eh, bueno, quería saber, eh, además, bueno, hace no mucho estuviste peleando, defendiendo tu título aquí en Sudamérica, quería saber qué sentiste y además si existió alguna chance eh, antes de que, de que exista esta pandemia del coronavirus, eh, de que sea algún evento en Perú. Uh, yo creo que todo es posible porque um, um, you see ya había mucho acceso en países latinoamericanos, claro que sí, Brasil, um, uh, creo que Argentina, uh, sí. uh, creo que Chile también era uh, Uruguay donde he peleado yo. Y yo creo que todo es posible. Es posible que ya vamos a tener un evento en Perú también. Me gustaría mucho pelear en Latinoamérica. Porque de verdad, cuando yo uh, regresé después de uh, algunos años de Latinoamérica y ya sentí el aire de Latinoamérica, el idioma, la cultura, de todo, esto uh, yo me sentí tan como en la casa. Y sí, de verdad, me gustaría pelear más en Latinoamérica. Perfecto. Y la última de mi parte, hace un rato Antonina dijo que no tenían nada planeado en caso de que ambas consigan la victoria en, en cuanto a festejo. Entonces, eh, quiero preguntarte cuál sería para, para, para ti el festejo ideal para las hermanas Shevchenko en caso de que ganen. Eh, ¿Qué les gustaría hacer o qué acostumbran a hacer? Ah, yo creo que vamos a ir a un restaurante peruano. Aquí el restaurante peruano, hay un excelente restaurante. Eh, vamos a ir para tener comida peruana y es yo creo que el mejor festejo que se puede tener. Bueno, perfecto. Muchas gracias y mucha suerte para tu pelea, Valentín. Gracias. We will take the next set of questions from Carlos Contreras with Milenio Diario. Hola, Valentina. Hola. Eh, por, por esta pelea, Jennifer, eh, parece que cada vez en las apuestas eres más favorita eh, que las rivales eh, y porque has eh, seguido ganando. Eh, ¿De alguna forma eh, sientes que eso eh, afecta para tu carrera, que la gente piense que eres tan dominante, ¿no? que, que, que pues encuentren pocas posibilidades de que pierdas y, y, y pocas eh, expectativas, porque saben que vas a ganar o piensan que vas a ganar siempre? Mm, 
¿De qué manera se, se puede afectarme? No sé, no veo, no veo aquí. Uh, solamente estoy entrenando tan duro para um, tener una pelea un poco más fácil, pero si sí podrían ver cómo estoy entrenando, cómo, uh, qué tal duros son estos, uh, ya van a poder entender todo. Porque uh, yo entreno más duro que todos mis contribuciones. Se, se retiró Khabib y mucha gente habla de él como el campeón más dominante en su división eh, pero parece que desde que estás en 125 no hay nadie que esté ni siquiera cerca eh, de ti eh, ¿cómo te sientes tú en ese sentido cuando viene la plática del, del campeón más dominante en la historia o la campeona más dominante en la historia? Tú sabes yo no estoy enfocada mucho uh, en lo que están diciendo y yo estoy enfocada en mis entrenamientos lo que uh, a mí me más interesa es uh, hacer mi pelea, hacer mi performance mejor que otra, más dominante, mucho más uh, técnica, mucho más fuerte. Es lo que me, de verdad lo me... Lo... Estoy, um, no soy persona que uh, piensa de lo que otras dicen. No, estoy más, uh, crea, estoy creando mi propio camino, mi propio estilo de vida. Y eso es lo que, um, lo que yo hago. Yo no quiero escuchar a nadie, solo nada en cómo yo. Eh, sabemos que eres una muy buena peleadora, pero también te vimos muy bien en los comentarios el otro día, incluso traduciendo de, de, del ruso al español. ¿Cómo te sentiste? Y, y es algo que te gustaría hacer. ¿En el futuro cuando te retires? Uh, Tú sabes, no es primera vez que hemos, uh, hemos hecho esto con uh, UC Español. Fue una experiencia excelente. Uh, nosotros hemos comentado uh, UC Chile, ahora uh, el último UC. Y, um, sí, de verdad me gustaría hacerlo más porque uh, hay gente con quien estoy trabajando son excelentes. ¿Sabes? Todo es así como fluido en una atmósfera muy buena y no tengo que esperar hasta que me <risa> puedo hacer uh, todo de una vez. Muy bien, eh, pues eh, felicidades Valentina y ojalá que sea otra buena pelea el sábado. Muchas gracias. We will take the next set of questions from Luis Green from MMA Crazy. Valentina, you're back fighting in Las Vegas this weekend, and the last time you fought in Vegas was your first fight against Amanda Nunes. Um, how are you enjoying being back in, in Vegas? Um, you know, I live in Las Vegas the last three years, and I really enjoy to live here. It's a very beautiful place, and I'm sure it's gorgeous. Uh, you see performance in to train, to have nutrition stuff, to have physical therapy in there. So it's uh, anything that uh, a fighter could wish uh, here in Las Vegas. And, uh, I had all my training camp in here, and I would say that I'm in the form, uh, very ready for my fight this Definitely. And, and, you know, it's a very different uh, field to fight week this time around. How are you dealing with all of the new uh, COVID protocols? Mm, uh, trying to manage it. Uh, I'm kind of the person who not thinking, oh, we're in the situation. We can try to find the way to make it better than it was. But um, in general, my lifestyle is very... Uh, outdoors, being on the nature all the time. My trainings, uh, they are very private. Uh, I have my coach, Pavel Fedotov, and we have here in Las Vegas very good training partners, and they're like uh, every time helping us in uh, our preparation. So um, I would say my training was not as And uh, you're defending your title for the fourth time this Saturday against Jennifer Meyer. What was your reaction when her name was put forward and you knew that she was going to be next for the title? Okay, she's the next. This is what my reaction. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
And what do you think of Maya as an opponent? And do you see any areas of her game that might present any dangers to you? I think she's a good fighter. She's a mermaid. She has good stand up, good round game. I hope she's gonna bring everything because I really hope she's gonna do it because I don't want like. And she has had a history of missing weight in the past. Do you have any worries that she won't hit the flyweight mark uh, when it, you know, when it's time to weigh in? You know, I don't feel that she's gonna miss. I feel she is. Uh... And uh, how do you see the fight playing out on Saturday? And, and how do you get your victory? There is only one way I see it. It doesn't matter what I have to do, I will do it. I know everything. I was working so hard. I really know I'm focused on what I'm doing. Uh, there is no way. There is fight. OK, thank you so much. We will take our next set of questions from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Hey, Valentina. Uh, you know, you always talk about, you know, when you go into a fight you're facing, you treat them with the utmost respect. But obviously, there's a lot of expectation to win this fight. Do you do you feel do you ever feel like you have to live up to certain expectations or, or you know, the kind of pressure that goes on you as champion to go out there and perform and win, but also win impressively? You know, uh, every fight, it's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of pressure. It doesn't matter how, in what situations you are. It doesn't matter, really, because um, I never was kind of like a person who go into the octagon or in the ring and, oh, I'm here just to enjoy. Just to enjoy, make fun, and then go back home and do whatever I want to do. No, when I go there, I'm focused on the victory. I know this is the most important and only one thing that I train in very hard to um, perform, to make my performance the best, the best one. There is no extra pressure, no something extra. Fighting by itself, it's already pressure. Um, I know you're 100% focused on Jennifer Maya, but I've got to ask you, uh, Jessica Andrade recently jumped in the division, and I know you don't pick your opponents. You're not going to say she's next, but is it exciting to have somebody like Jessica in the division, another former champion? Uh, because I know, obviously, you know, you want to continue to build the flyweight division. Is it good to have somebody like Jessica, you know, as a contender? You know, it's uh, in general, flyweight, they are super good. They are very strong. They have very good skills, very good level. And I'm saying that the future of uh, women MMA in UC it's uh, behind flyweight because uh, I think this, this weight is optimal for a lot of girls because you can see, like, uh, moving down from bantam weight, going up from straw weight, coming from all around different promotions, and you can see how good they are. It's not uh, just one name. It's all of them. You can see all top 15, and if you're going to watch particularly each one, they are super good, very good. Are you impressed by her fight with Caitlin Chukagian? I didn't watch it. I watched uh, just like a little pieces on Instagram of the last <laughs> last KO, um, but I didn't watch the full performance. And last thing for me, I know we talked about your appearance in the movie Bruised. I'm sure you saw the news that it sold to Netflix for like twenty million dollars. Uh, did you talk to Hallie? Were you excited for that news that? You know, everyone's going to get to see your movie soon. And, and obviously, that's a big deal for the movie to sell for that much money. I'm very excited. And I hope I cannot wait when it's going to be, when I can see it, like, complete <laughs> all from the air, from the beginning to the end. I watched a few parts of the movie, and I would say it's... I hope it's going to have a lot of success. Hallie gonna be amazing uh, director of the movie because she did so good. She did so good job here. 
uh, in this movie. It was, you know, to work with her, it was so smooth and uh, she knows the right words, what to do, even like being focused in, in her performance, in her acting, same time to see her all the she has to say. So I hope she's going to have a lot of success and I will be in her team for the next one. <laughs> Thank you, Valentina. We will take the last set of questions from Cote Cruz with the For to Win podcast. Hola, Valentina, ¿cómo estás? Todo bien, gracias. Un gusto poder conversar contigo. Vamos a hablar en inglés para poder compartir con los colegas tus impresiones. Being such a dominant champion in this division in terms of, of pure skill, and also considering that this is going to be your fourth title defense, I'd love to know your opinion on the current state of this division and the possibility of going for that double champ status against Amanda in a trilogy. Do you prefer uh, multiple title defenses on one division or do you see value on multiple titles on different divisions? Uh, my goal at this moment is to defend my belt um, as long as I can. But I'm not discouraging any opportunity. So everything is open. And, um, but for me, the goal number one is I'm sorry, Valentina, I lost you there. I didn't hear your reply. I'm so sorry. I say my goal is to defend my belt. Do you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Uh, to defend my belt for the, as long as I can, but I'm not discarding any weight class as well. But it has to be right fight, right opponent, right time. What do you think about your role in women's MMA and the figure of inspiring women to compete in martial arts and to learn martial arts to defend themselves? What is, what is your feeling about this influence you can make on women? I hope it's good. I hope there is a girl who wants to like me. <laughs> I hope so. You, we know that you've been living in Peru for a while. Could you tell us about how was your experience and what kind of things caught your eye? And at the same time, uh, could you talk about the development of MMA in Latin America? I think the MMA in Latin America is uh, on a very good level, very good fighters in there, uh, MMA, Muay Thai, everything. I lived in Peru, me, my sister, coach, Pavel said, for uh, eight years in Latin America. Great, great country. So, enjoy a lot the culture, people, the food, everything. Uh, nature, of course. We live in Peru, and like, uh, and you have the ocean, gorgeous ocean, then you have jungle, uh, a selva, Amazon, mountains. You have opportunity to prepare for uh, anything. I mean, in terms like when you fight on the altitude, you have to find the perfect condition for your trip. They have it all. So it's no much traveling. You have everything in one. Finalmente, me gustaría darte una oportunidad de que pudieras dirigirte a los fans de habla hispana y que pudieras comentar qué deberíamos estar esperando este sábado en tu próxima pelea. Uh, por primero, quiero agradecer a, a todos, a, 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 todos, a toda la gente que uh, siempre uh, por energía positiva. Quiero decir que uh, lo aprecio mucho. De verdad, lo aprecio de todo mi corazón. Muchas gracias a ustedes. Thank you so much for your time, Valentina. Best of luck on Saturday, champ. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Valentina.